Hey everyone, today we are diving into a real exciting project. I'll be assembling a powerful battery pack using this kit I got from China. Pair it with this high quality, high current 18650 litre color HD2 batteries. This pack can power tools like carless screwdrivers, impact wrenches or even an angle grinder. Still around till the end to see how it performs in real world test. So, here's the plan. We'll use this battery kit to assemble a 10 cell battery pack like this. This is my old battery. The Elitocala HD2 batteries are great for high current applications, making them perfect for my power tools. For this build I have my trusty soldering iron, spot welder and of course we'll use the GVDA123 multimeter to ensure everything running smoothly. But before we start, a quick note on safety. Lithium ion batteries can be volatile if not handled properly. Always wear gloves and safety goggles when working with them. And make sure your workspace is organized so you are not scrambling around once you are in the middle of a task. But before we continue, let me take a moment to take about the GVDA GD123 multimeter that's been essential in my workshop. This multimeter is not only high accurate but also incredibly user-friendly with a large backlit screen that makes readings easy to see even in low light. It's got an impressive range of features from measuring voltage and current to testing continuity and resistance, which is great for a project like this. I can quickly check the voltage of each cells, cell to ensure they are all balanced before assembly. Plus, the GVDA GD123 has an auto-off feature which saves battery life and a durable design that holds up well in a busy workshop like mine. Whether you're a professional or a hobbyist, this multimeter is a solid choice for accurately and durability. I'll link it below for any more interested. First up, we'll arrange the batteries according to the layout recommended by the kit. When building a battery pack, layout matters because it helps with current distribution and heat dissipation. I'll play this in a 2x5 layout for better balance and fit. I'm using spot welding for the connections between the cells. Spot welding is preferable here because it ensures solid connections without risking overheating which can be an issue when using a soldering iron on battery cells. Let's get these connections in place. Now that everything is connected, it's time to check the final voltage with our GD123. This will tell us if the pack is fully operational 
and if there's any issue with the connections. 18 volts, everything is connect corrected. With the cell connected, it's time to attach the BMS, a battery management system. This protects the pack for the overcharging, over-discharging and short circuits. I'll solder the BMS leads onto the correct terminals here, ensuring everything, everything is secure. The BMS is critical because it ensures the safety and longevity of the battery pack. Once this is in place, our pack is almost ready for testing. And now I connected the BMS to the batteries. Perfect, the readings looks good, everything's within the extended range. So now it's time to put this back to the test on the same actual tools. My mistake, the wrong side. The spring must be here. Let's change it. This is my old battery, 492 grams, 1 pound and 0 0.84. And my new battery? is 648 grams 1 pound and 4 to 8 and now let's check the voltage on battery 18.1 and 3 nice let's see how this battery pack performs in action I'll start with my cordless impact wrench and then test it with an angle grinder. This will give us a real sense of the battery's capacity and how well it handles high current tools. Looks like our DIY battery pack is holding up well, delivering the power we need. I'm really happy with these results. So, so there you have it, a DIY high current battery pack that's perfect for carless tools. If you enjoyed this build or learned something new, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe for my projects like this. Until the next time, keep holding and stay safe.